Recently we've had several requests for some basic HTML and CSS tutorials. In particular we've been sent a message from Josh in London who has asked Hey guys, I'm fairly new to HTML and making websites. <coughs> I'm struggling to remove the underline from the links on my HTML pages. Please could you explain how I can remove these as I'm struggling to get the CSS working that I'm copying and pasting from other sites. Josh. So instead of simply making some CSS available to copy and paste, we want to take the opportunity to explain how styling your links with CSS works. First of all, CSS isn't the only way you can style your links. If you're using an old HTML book or if you've stumbled across an ancient HTML tutorial online, you may have seen links being styled using the body tag attributes. This method looks a little like this. If you're using this technique, then stop. These body attribute settings were created before CSS was introduced. CSS or cascading style sheets are the modern way of styling your web pages. Using CSS to style your links will give you far more control. Not only that, these body tag attributes were depreciated in HTML4 and are removed altogether in HTML5. So now that we've established that it's CSS that we need to use to style links, let's look at the four CSS link states. The A stands for anchor, as in the anchor tag or link tag. The A link selector will define the style that your regular unvisited links. The A visited selector allows you to style links to pages that have already been viewed or visited. The A hover selector styles the link for when the mouse hovers over the link. And finally, the A active selector sets a fourth style for when you uh, physically click the link. Let's jump onto the computer and see how these links work and how we can start to style them. Okay, so I've set up a page in Adobe Dreamweaver and obviously you can use any text editor or uh, web tool uh, for making your, your web pages. And I've pasted in a little bit of text and I've simply linked up the word old man that we can use as a visual reference. Now in Dreamweaver I've got the split view and I've also enabled live view on the design view on the right hand side which was if you're simply simulating for the benefit of this tutorial how the browser reacts to the code. So we're seeing here the code and then we're seeing here that, you know, how the, how the web page will look on a browser. So let's just remind ourselves how default HTML handles links without any assistance from CSS styling. The links are always blue and underlined. Um, there's usually no hover state. And if you click the link, you'll see that the active color of red is there by default. Now in Dreamweaver's um, live view, I'm, I'm actually unable to show you what the hover, sorry, the visited state looks like. But if I just uh, bring up Safari, you can see the most common place you'll see the uh, visited state um, are on search engines. For example, here I've searched for Creare. I've obviously visited our website and you can see that the link is in purple, which is the default HTML um, visited color. There's other pages you can see that are in blue, which indicate to me the, uh, the website user that I haven't visited that page. So that's the, uh, the visited state. So let's, uh, let's introduce the, the CSS styles. And obviously there's three ways you can introduce CSS to your page. You can uh, add the CSS to the head. Um, you can add it inline, or you can add it to an external page, which is what I prefer. But for the, again, the, the benefits of being able to see it all clearly, we'll simply paste it into the head area of our HTML page. Now I've just opened up the, the style tags and defined the type as uh, text slash CSS and I've pasted in the four uh, link states that we've just talked about a moment ago. Now we can start styling these inside the curly brackets and let's start by perhaps changing the colour. So let's specify a new link colour. So let's change the default blue to perhaps, uh, let's pick a green. And now the visited colour, like I said, there's not many places where you'll see webmasters utilizing the visited color. It is still a useful tool on search engines and you'll find that uh, websites like Wikipedia are still using it. But in most cases, you're probably want to, going to want to keep the visited the same as the link. So I'm going to use a little short code here. I'm going to go to a link and I'm going to put a comma and I've cut the, uh, the a visited code. And I'm simply going to paste it in here like so. All that this is going to do now is that the, for both the link and the visited, it's going to use the same, sorry, the same styles that I define inside here. And this is one of the common mistakes when it comes to defining your link styles, is that the, you have to bear in mind that the, the link is, is different to the visited. So, for example, if Josh was having a problem removing the underline, perhaps he only added the styles for just a link. And then because he hadn't defined the a visited, he was, he'd be getting this underline which he, didn't, which he didn't want. So 
Um, usually when I code my websites, I always add a link and a visited to be the same. So we've picked our green colour. Let's pick uh, a new hover colour. Obviously uh, different to the green. Let's, uh, let's pick red for hover. Then let's perhaps select a new active colour. And let's perhaps do blue. So let's save that and then let's click on to the uh, live view on the design view. And you can see already that our uh, link is green, the hover state is red. And if we click the link, so I'm just clicking and holding the mouse down so that you can see the active colour. So already we're starting to manipulate the default HTML link um, styling. And uh, we now have access to all of the different um, styling attributes that are available in uh, CSS. We can change anything from the, you know, the font weight to the letter spacing. Um, you know, we've got full control as to how we style our links. So for example, we could perhaps say on hover, uh, you may wish for the uh, font weight to change to bold. So now if we again click into that, we've saved it. You see that when I hover the mouse over, the hover state, the text has gone bold. There's all kinds of styles that you can add to this, and it's particularly useful when you're working in Adobe Dreamweaver because you can use the, uh, the sort of code hinting like I'm doing here. And perhaps if we change the letter spacing, let's say two pixels. And again, if we click back and hover our mouse over the link, you can see that the text is changing. Now, let's just uh, perhaps remove these uh, the, the two new styles, and let's look at Josh's original question. How do you remove the underline from your links? So with this one, you simply use text decoration and you select none. And if you don't want the, uh, the underline to appear on any of your links, you can simply copy and paste this to all of your different states, like so. That will then completely remove all of the underlining from your links. Thank you for watching this week's video. Tune in next week for advice on sharpening photographs for the web.